Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing. I'm your host, Jim McDonald, joined all, as always by my trusty co-host, Tyson Franklin. Tyson, what's going on today? Good morning, Big Jim. It is fantastic. It is June, which I believe in tropical North Queensland is the best time of the year. So if anyone's ever thinking, this is my tourist ad for Cairns, if you're ever thinking of visiting Cairns, June, July, August are, are the best months to actually do it. Sun is shining and we have oh, just what we find cold, other people down south <laughs> laugh at. I'll go. Oh. June is a great month though. I'm very you biased. It? It's, uh, it's my birth month. So I love the month of June. What date is your birthday? In, uh, I should June, know this by now. June 30th. I probably do so have coming it. up here in about two weeks. So, Oh, end of financial <laughs> year for us. Yeah. So it's the end of financial year for Australia. Yeah. Your gift, if, if you got one, would be tax. That enough. sounds fat. Uh, that that sounds fantastic. Year. And just a little teaser, I think coming up here pretty soon, we're going to be talking maybe about that end of financial year, or maybe at the mid-year for us people here in North America, but we'll say that for a different podcast. But what are we going to jump into today on, on your side of things? Okay. So the topic today, I'm just going to call it street appeal. And I think it's something that whether you own your own business, the own business, if you own your own building, or you might even be within a, a shopping center, or you might be down a, a mall or something like that. Street appeal is all about how is your business being viewed from when people are actually driving past, yeah, walking past, riding the bike, wherever they're going, getting past your business. I think you've really got to pay a lot of attention to that because sometimes you can have the greatest business inside, but on the outside, it could look like a dog's breakfast. And that can be very off-putting to people where they go, oh, you know, I don't want to go in there. That looks awful but they don't realize how nice it is inside. No, that's, and in North America, you usually call that curb appeal. Curb appeal is oh, usually curb appeal. like you're on the curb and what does that building or what does that house look like? That's so that's up here. That's usually what yeah. we call that. But I think that's a huge, that's it's that kind of that first impression someone comes either driving by your, your clinic or they pull up to your clinic and it's going to set them in a certain mood or kind of, I guess, get them going in a way just by seeing what you have. Do you look pr professional? Do you look like, there, you're someplace they want to go. And whether it's, like you said, if it's amazing inside, it's not great. In, if it's not great until they get into the front door, it's setting, it kind of priming in the middle way that you may not want. Yeah. And I think it's important to view your business from different angles. So don't just stand directly at the front and go, okay, oh yeah, front on looks fantastic. Is have a look at it at different angles. Yeah. How's it look coming up one way of the street? How's it look coming up the other way of the street? And is there are there trees? Is there something in the way that's actually blocking your signage? Or is there something about your building that is really off-putting? I've seen somewhere the front might be painted a certain color, but then the side of the building has never been touched. And it's a paint color that doesn't even match. And it's actually off-putting. So to me, it's important to look at everything from uh, different angles. You don't need to look at it from the air. <laughs> no, the, the, those, the Google Earth or that <laughs> top-down satellite view of your clinic is not something that, unless you're arriving by helicopter, they're probably not going to be checking it out. But I think the signage thing, I think is really important. I think what I've seen with some clinics in the past is that maybe they've had two or three different rebrands. Their website yeah. has one logo. The Google business profile has something different. The front of their office has something different. Their stationery has something different. So if there's like a disconnect with the signage or the branding of the logo, it can be a bit off-putting to people because they can look pretty radically different and may not know where they're going or yeah, it can be a little bit discombobulating, I would say. Yeah, but it's also one of those things. I reckon if you look at your signage and you think, oh, should I change it or should I update it? If you have to ask yourself that question, more than likely you should change it. And it also goes way back to whoever did, yeah, whoever your sign writer was. Not all signs are created equal. Even just the vinyl signage that they put on windows and storefronts. I've seen some after 18 months look pretty ragged. Whereas other stuff, five years later, it looks fantastic. So the quality of the materials you're using is really important. But your signage is a reflection of your business. And if the signage is looking pretty bad, people notice that. If they're driving past, they go, oh, if they can't look after the signs, are they going to look after, what are they going to do with my feet? No, that's a perfect example. And I think also whether in the US, a lot of times people like to have flags, whether it be the country flag, the state flag, or some flag for the office, the same thing. If there's a ratty flag that has, it's in tatters. It definitely is not something, it's a, it's a poor reflection on who you are as a business owner. I have noticed that when I've been in America. There's there a are lot, lot of flags. flags. <laughs> yeah. I don't see any flags in Australia, and like, except if it's Australia Day, then some people will put flags on their fence and other, yeah, different places. But that's the only time I usually see flags in Australia. The other part that's part of your street appeal or curb appeal, as you put it, 
is even your the windows and glass frontage. I've seen some businesses where they've got that much, that many stickers and information on the windows. One, it can get really confusing, so it's hard to even see what the message is all about. I, I get off put when I can't actually see inside a business. I know that might sound weird, but when I see too much signage on a window and I can't actually see and I go, oh, do I want to walk in or don't I want to walk in? Because I don't know what's going to be on the other side. But I do understand with some businesses, depending on how the sun actually hits them, they have to have the windows all blocked out or otherwise the sun will kill them in the afternoon. Especially I'd say here. also it's a, it can be a security thing as well, depending on what part of town you're in or there's sometimes people that maybe clinics yeah. more in an industrial part of town where there's not as much I don't know, police surveillance or law enforcement around. So yeah, it, it definitely, it, it's great to see inside of a practice, but I definitely have seen whether it be no windows, those kind of things more from a security pur- pur- purpose, but it does, yeah, the, the more open you can have it, the more inviting it is for people to come in. Yeah. And especially if it looks really nice inside, people see it and go, oh, that looks fantastic. Where the last clinic that I had, we, the street appeal, the building itself was okay, it was, and, but the signage was great. And when you saw inside our shop, you just went, oh yeah, that place looked really good and looks really inviting. And at nighttime, we would leave lights on so you could actually see inside the business as you went past because it was on basically a main road. Another part that I think people need to be aware of is just the entrance of your front door, the footpath leading up to it, if there's any surrounding bins, because that is all part of the street appeal. At our clinic, there was a, a bus stop and the council had the bus seat right up against our, bu- our building. So one night we went out and bolted it. No one's, no one's listening to this. We unbolted it and we moved it away from our building. It, ne- ever, it never, ever got moved back, which was great. So obviously they, they agreed with us. That's where it should have been put. But also because there's a bus stop there, great for patients that needed a bus, but there was also a bin there. And certain people would, at certain times, would just dump other rubbish in there, prawn heads, fish, and stuff like that. So just be aware, if there's bins around your building or there's a bus stop, which means there's always going to be people there, they will leave rubbish. They, rubbish. they could leave cans. They could leave other things there. Go out and check it on a regular basis because even though it's not really your responsibility, it is your responsibility to make sure your clinic always looks good. Cigarette butts, all that, any sort of rubbish, because if someone's walking past your business and they see 150 cigarette butts there and a dead bird, as far as they're concerned, that's your dead bird and you, it should yeah, be. That's a there. proximity thing, right? It's, it, it's in the clinic, yeah. your clinic's area. So they, whether you like it or not, they'll associate what's going on with, with the, the seat there next to your office or the disgusting trash, trash can, what's going on there. So just being cognizant and being aware of that so you can really present a really like clean, professional look to the outside of the property is hugely important. Yeah, and I know this can sometimes be difficult if you're in a, a shopping center where there's shopping center management has to look after things. But I think the if the if you notice a problem and you're paying rent, then you should be drawing the attention to the landlord that hey, this is a problem. Someone needs to fix this up. It could be as, as simple as seating in the wrong spot. We had a, a clinic at a shopping center at one stage. Those kids rides like an airplane, little kids get in there and all. They put one of them right out the front of our podiatry clinic. When you're in the reception area, shopping centers at the best of times are loud. You get a couple of kids screaming with their parents because they want to have another ride and the parents don't want to put another 20 cent piece in. My God, we ended up going to the center management and saying, you've got to move. You have to move that ride. It's just ridiculous. And we argued with them for about six months, but eventually we got them to move it a bit further down. So you can get things done, but you just, if, if it's a negative for your business in any way, in, in the way that it, it appears, then you need to do something. Yeah, you can't about ignore it. It. It, it. you can't ignore it away. You have to take action. Mm, yeah, do it. Be an ostrich. It doesn't work. The other part I think you need to look at is actually beyond the glass. So if you have glass, it could be glass doors, whatever, and people can actually see inside your business, it's really important to be aware of what they can actually see. So it's if, if you have, what do your floor coverings are? What do they look like? Yeah, if it's a vinyl sort of material, is it worn in particular? Is there parts that are split or, or lifting? If it's carpet, is it worn? Are there stains? Anything that someone can be looking through the glass at night, then what will they see? Is your seating old? Does that need to be replaced? Is your reception counter, 
is the furniture mismatched? I've seen places where, yes, you probably bought that at an office supplier place in 1998, and those seats, oh, that two of them look new, but that third one looks a bit dodgy. That lounge looks like it's your grandmother's. Those pot plants near watering, those poor plants are dying in the corner. There's old magazines there. And you're looking around, you go, this just, just does not look appealing at all. Lighting, there might be six lights in the reception area, but only four work. And I know sometimes people might listen and they go, oh, but that, I'm a good podiatrist. My reputation precedes me. They'll never know you're a good podiatrist because they'll see that sort of stuff and go, no, I'm not going to go in there. It just looks dodgy. Well, if you're neglecting certain aspects of the way your clinic looks like or the, what's how your clinic's functioning, they're going to wait. That's the way you treat patients as well, right? You're not, it's not a well-run organization or run clinic. It's like a, it's definitely a liability. So the more you can be on top of those things, the more trust you build and the more, you know, professional you'll look and, and your staff will look. Yeah. And it's also, it's a law of attraction it attracts like. So I did a webinar in March, beginning of February, end in March, I did it. And it was how to attract and retain podiatry talent. Great webinar, if I say so myself, but I am biased. But the people who were there said it was great too. And, but it, I talked about the law of attraction. I also did a, a post in the Podiatry Business Owners Club and attracts like. So remove anything that could potentially be repelling to a patient. So if you look at something, you go, oh, I don't know, patients are like that. Not get rid of it. If it could be, if it could repel certain patients, get rid of it. But also if you set your clinic up and you have it set up in a way that is very appealing on the eye where it looks super nice, those patients that have bare, that are bare feet and a bit grubby probably won't come in there because they'll look and go, no, nah, that's not for me. I'm looking for the place with the beige walls, the old lounge, the, the stain on the carpet so when I walk in with my dirty feet, they won't know, and the mismatched furniture. That's what's going to suit me. Whereas other people, they will see that and they go, that's repelling. I'm not going to go there. So you just remember like attracts like, it's really important to understand. No, that's an excellent point. You just have to like project the type of uh, clientele or protect the type of patients you want to come to your practice. And if you're reaching that level, they're going to be attracted and the people that don't feel like it's a good fit will be repelled. Yeah. And I, like I touched on car parks a little bit. Did I, I've already spoken. We talked a little bit about curb appeal and walking around the building, but it wouldn't get too, you didn't get too far into depth with the car park. Okay. So with the car park. Sometimes a car park may be out of your control. You have no control with it. You're in a complex where there's eight other businesses. Once again, this is a landlord problem, so you need to talk to them. But if there's weeds growing, overgrown trees that could be dropping things onto cars, or it just the car park itself looks messy. In my our old building, a lot of the leaves would fall from the neighbors and would all blow around into one corner. So it was, it was a place where every week you had to make sure you just cleaned it out. Otherwise, it would build up really quickly. But the best way to fix it is we contacted all the neighbors and said, hey, can you chop down some of these trees? And they did. We contacted the council and said, oh, some of these trees, because some of the neighbors said, oh, no, we can't touch them. It's, this is rented from the council. Okay, so we contacted the council. They came in and chopped them down. And other ones, we just snuck over the fence and poisoned them over a period of time to, to get rid of them. These are the things you have to do. Everyone listening to this, they know they've all done it, or thought about doing it. And, but because we just knew, this all reflected on your car park. And when people turn up for the first time, they say you only get one chance for a first impression, but also people driving past, if they can see into your car park, the car park is a reflection in your business, whether you totally control it or whether you don't. So you need to take action. Yeah, if there's garbage, if the lines aren't painted well, like you said, if there's leaves and branches and things it, like within the parking lot, it's one of those things, it's a proximity thing. Whether it was your fault or the neighbor's fault or whoever's tree fault it was, it reflects on you and your practice. So you really have to be on top of that as much as you are with the interior of your practice as well. Yeah. And we've been guilty of it in our own business where you just get so used to just being there that turning up to work and just yeah, walking in through the back door that you just get very casual about it. And until eventually you'll hear something like this podcast and go, oh, maybe I should go out and have a look and go. Yeah, those trees are a bit overgrown. Yeah, there are more leaves in the car park than what there should be. Yeah, that yeah, the lines need to get redone. That's I don't think you know, if we had lines in our back in our car park, maybe we should have put lines in. But these are the things that that make you think about. And I think the final thing I just want to share with everyone is drive around and have a look at your competitors. Put your ego aside and ask yourself if you were a patient and you looked at your business front on. And you went and looked at your competitors front on which business has better street appeal or curb appeal? Which one would you go to 
knowing nothing else. You go to your websites, they might look the same. Now you're judging it purely on what they look like. Is yours up to stand with everybody else? Or is, yeah, I probably would even go to my own. Well, I think that's a really important point. I think sometimes we get, it's like a habit. We just get used to seeing our own clinic. And sometimes we get so blind to what we see every day for years at a time. Are there any ways that you think that it could be beneficial for other people to clinic owners to get like a second set of eyes on it? Is that a member of your staff? Is that a friend who's a dentist? Like, how do you, how would you, what's another way to get some eyes on it and get some, some feedback? If you feel like you're not being as critical or you just want to get someone else to take a look at things. I reckon if you've got a team, is get your team to do exactly the same thing. Have them go and look at your competitors and take notes. What do you like about the front of their building? Then come back and have a look at, it, at your own and say, what do you, what are they doing better than us? What on their store looks better than ours? And what about ours sort of looks unappealing that's putting people off? That if you could change anything, what would you change? And get your team to do it because your team will be brutally honest with you sometimes. And you can ask your family, always ask your mum. No, def- Mums are definitely usually not a family pretty, member, uh, right? pretty blunt. Oh, if it's so sensitive, my mum would probably go, Pro Arch, what sort of <laughs> name is that? I go, don't worry about the name, I'm stick with just the thing. But anyway, if I look at my old building now, there was a, a new clinic opened up across the road and I look at them and I look at my old building and the new place for theirs, there's certain things about it which is far more appealing than what my old building is, but there's other things about my old building when I look at it because you can actually see into the business that's a lot more appealing than what theirs is. So it's a bit of a, it's a 50-50. I should take a photo of both of them. And <laughs> It'd be a good blog post. Website. Yeah, it would be. But it is. it is. It's one of those things that, like I said, there, there's certain things about the other building, which is really nice, but there's things about it I go, I don't like that. And the same as my old building. There's no one perfect place. So there's definitely, it seems like both have a, a kind of things that, that are appealing. So definitely, I, I'd be curious to see, see picture of those. What's interesting, I think go and have a look at some really successful businesses, whether they're franchises or any type of business in your area, and sit back and just look at what they've done and go, what is it about their business that's appealing? And you'll find usually signage is a massive thing. So when I compare the new place, the new podiatry clinic to my old clinic, the new podiatry clinic signage is spot on. It is really good. Don't, not a fan of the colors, but it's spot on. The, my old clinic, the signs need to be updated. They are just dog ugly now. They, they need to, like I sold it to them seven years ago, and they've used some of my old signage and just tried to re, reuse it on top of putting some new stuff there, and it just looks dog ugly. I look at it and it's going, oh, guys, just changing that would make a huge difference. They're a big corporate company and it's all about profits. Yeah. It's like almost home ownership, right? If you just wait every 10 or 15 years to start fixing things that have gone broken, you're going to have a, a long list and it's going to be super expensive. But if you can do some consistent upkeep and really check things off the list every six months or every year, not that things have to be radically changed, but just being more consistent with those, those updates. Yeah, def- there can be curb appeal. There can be benefits that are, don't, they feel like cost at the time, but it's more of an investment in the business. Yeah, but if you think of your own home, you, like you said, you could just let it go. Ah, don't worry, mow in the yard. We're not trying to sell it. We know there's nothing in there. <laughs> just you could let the paint look terrible. You could let mold get on the fence or whatever. But you don't. You, you have a certain about it in your home, that, which is why you mow your lawn, which is why you, you paint your house and you look after your fence and your gardens. Because you need to take the same pride in your business. I had a friend of mine, and she said I was a good luck charm. We were talking one day and she, I said something about a house. I went, oh, I reckon you probably need to just do these certain things with the front of your house, make it look more appealing, curb appeal. So she did, did a couple of things. I reckon the next day, the day she finished it, this Japanese guy came and just knocked on their front door. I said, we want to buy your house. I was going to do a Japanese accent then, but it would have been terrible. I want to buy your house. And, and she sold it. And he offered her about $200,000 more than she would have even thought about getting for it. She said, and the things that she changed at the front were so small, but it just made the house look more appealing. So if that can make someone just come out of the blue and buy a house, I reckon if you make your business more appealing, it will attract patients as yeah, well. It'll attract patients. It'll attract, we didn't get into this too much, but if you're trying to hire an associate, if you have a up-to-date yeah. clinic that's appealing, not only to patients, but also 
make someone want to work there. And it's also for your staff, right? Like it's, it's a motivator for your staff to have a great looking clinic that's functional and well kept. There's more, yeah, definitely the patients are hugely important, but there's other benefits. Your reputation with other physicians, if they come into your clinic or they send their, their kid or their wife has a, a foot and ankle problem, they send them to you and you have this office that's great. It's a total reflection on you and your practice. So the, the better you can keep it and the, the better upkept you can do, it's going to pay dividends. I remember one of my older clinics that I'd been in there for about three years. And when I moved, first moved, I didn't know anything about street appeal it was in a little mall and this one day we just looked and we had like these green we had these green blinds that used to come down so we took them off we just took the blinds totally off the front of the shop and then we just repainted the reception it's all we didn't do anything else our patient numbers <laughs> went up by about 20 percent straight away and the amount of patients came past and said when did you move in been here three years then we walked past here every day and didn't notice it because when we moved in, the color of the reception that was there was already an existing business. So we didn't care. We just went, oh, it's already painted. The blinds are up there. We're already there when they work. So why take them down? Never thought about it. But once we took them down and people could see in our business more, and then we painted it more to suit our color, things just improved. And it was like all together, a couple of hundred bucks to repaint and take some blinds down, but it added 20% increase in business. That's great. So it's worth doing. People listening to this, have a look at your business, make some changes. No, I think that's great, Tyson. Is there anything else you want to leave the listeners with for today? But I think that's a, been really thorough and definitely thinking about the physical aspects of your practice is really important. No, I could tell a joke, <laughs> but I won't. No, I've got, I've got nothing else to actually add to this. I, I just think it's one of those things that everybody knows about, but often doesn't think about it. So now it's time to just think about it. Have a look. Put in your yearly marketing planner that once a year, just have a look at the front of your building and just make that a habit. All right, that sounds great. Bye, See Tyson. you next week, Jim. Okay, bye.